Hello world, this is AFK Alfath here with a different type of vlog video today. Um, so recently I went to the Final Fantasy XV Road to Release screening um, at an Odeon cinema and I wasn't sure whether or not I'd be allowed to bring my vlog camera with me. So I'm doing sort of a post video to talk about my experiences and um, what the screening slash event was all about. Uh, so let's start. Uh, so a little bit more about the screening. Um, what this whole Odeon event was all about was um, bringing together, you know, Final Fantasy XV fans and sort of showcasing a live stream hosted by IGN, um, showing some upcoming gameplay footage, trailers, and news about the new Final Fantasy XV game. Um, because at the time of when I actually went there, there's around a week left till uh, Final Fantasy XV comes out. Um, so again because I'm a little bit behind schedule I think that the game is already out at this point and there may be an unboxing already on the channel um, so do check that out if it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the first part of the event was um, the live stream of um, Final Fantasy 15 hosted by IGN and that was around an hour and that was hosted by uh, Pete uh, Donaldson I think and he did an amazing job, very enthusiastic, very likeable and then after that was basically the King's Clay movie, uh, which is sort of a prequel slash alongside the start of the Final Fantasy XV game. Um, and it sort of gave you an insight into what the Final Fantasy XV story and world is all about. And I thought it was great. Um, so again, uh, we're going to be sharing our experiences together here in this vlog. So upon entering the screen where the live stream was going to be held, um, there were a few employees from Game who were giving out these cool game goodie bags um, for people who bought tickets to the event. And so um, I thought I'd share uh, what was inside with you guys. Um, so if we just open this up, take everything out. Cool. So the very first thing we've got is Moogle Munch. Um, so obviously I. I had some food before I came to the screening so I wasn't too hungry so I was going to save this uh, for later so I might have this later on today um, but as you can see Moogle Munch so keeping with the Final Fantasy theme there's a cute little Moogle there eating his own little packet <laughs> and these are chilli and lemon flavoured popcorn so uh, very tasty there we go sweet uh, so after that we got um, what well, is pretty cool actually a uh, Final Fantasy 15 um, sort of ticket oyster card holder. Uh, so just losing focus there a little bit. Whoop, there we go. Um, so it's got all the characters from Final Fantasy 15 there, and obviously it's just there to you know put your oyster card or so on in. But very cool. Feels very nice as well. Uh, after that, we've obviously got some promotion here um, for you to pre-order the Final Fantasy 15 game. Um, at the time of recording and probably the time this video is out, I've already pre-ordered my version of Final Fantasy XV and it is this version here on the back, the Deluxe Edition. So this will come in a steel, steel case book with a couple of uh, extra DLC and the Kingsglaive movie. Um, and there's some extra bonus content for that. And it will also come with a, a King's Tale Final Fantasy game. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just exclusive to the Deluxe Edition or whether you get that just for pre-ordering. But it's just a little 2D side scroller uh, set in the Final Fantasy XV universe, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that's that. <laughs> and finally, we've got uh, a couple of Final Fantasy sticker sheets. Um, so if I just open this up, it's two looks like two sheets in here, guys. So I'll just take those out now. Oops, stuck. There we go. So sticker sheet number one. It was very cool. Got Regalia, Insomnia RHS 13, which looks like the um, Royal Capital. Zenicro. <laughs> very cool. Not sure what I'll use these stickers for yet, but I'm sure they'll come in good use. 
And then the second sticker sheet, <laughs> which looks more up my street. Uh, so we've got up there a warning for wild beasts. And we've got a couple of Chocobo stickers, which are very cool. That would look great on like a laptop or something. Got another sort of warning thing here, I think. Yeah, very cool. Um, so yeah, that was all well, that was showing sort of in the, um, in the goodie bag, sort of lay it all out here for you guys. Uh, so we've got a couple of sticker sheets here. Got the promotion finger jiggy here. Got your Moogle popcorn. And then your Final Fantasy uh, ticket stuff. So uh, that was all well, that was in the goodie bag. And then uh, we got to the actual screening. So once we were finally into the screening, um, the cinema was actually absolutely packed to the brim full of Final Fantasy XV fans and it was so great to bring all these fans together and create such a, a welcoming and warm environment um, knowing that everyone is there for the same reason not just to watch a movie but to experience the live stream together and it was a very social event I think it was the first time I've been to a cinema and everyone sort of was allowed and had their phones out was on social media taking pictures and everything so sort of a missed opportunity not sort of brought my vlog camera but um, it was just a great environment to be in so the start of the stream began with um, sort of a quick car ride um, in the regalia um, and there was sort of a time-lapse video where the regalia with Noctis and the crew were just going around the world of EOS which is uh, the Final Fantasy 15 universe and it was great to see all these different areas of EOS they didn't look the same which was great to see and that each and hopefully each area is going to be different in EOS and one thing that I think is worth worth mentioning is that EOS is huge and the time lapse they did around with the regalia is of course a time lapse and just a quick overview of what is out there in EOS Obviously there's other ways to travel, um, you know, I'm sure there's going to be fast travel in the game, you could walk, chocobos and so on, so there's lots to explore with that. So after the quick time lapse video uh, in the regalia, um, it was a short interview with um, Ian Dickinson uh, with Square Enix and he was talking a bit more about the actual gameplay and um, inventory system in Final Fantasy XV. Um, so he was talking about the obvious changes that now Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy XV is no longer a turn-based uh, JRPG, it's more of a real-time action uh, JRPG and so I was talking about switching up the formula but how despite changing the formula it's still very much a Final Fantasy game at heart and um, I was talking about how in this game you don't sort of um, pick up items as easily, you have to actually craft them which is um, very RPG-like um, come to think of it, um, more western side really than um, uh, Eastern so it was very cool to, to see that you know Noctis can't just sort of well you can I'm sure in the game pick up and buy spells but um, to actually get the most out of the experience I think is you find items in the world of EOS and craft them yourself so that was very cool so shortly after the, um, the interview with Ian Dickinson there was sort of this um, enemy scale um, type video uh, which I'll definitely be putting into this vlog somewhere before or after this clip. Um, so it showed Noctis and Noctis starts off like this. I was like, okay, that's cool. And then the camera pans out and what it starts to show is the, um, the different sizes and scale of the enemies um, in the world of EOS and in Final Fantasy XV. And there are some colossal beasts out there. Um, I think the biggest one that they showed at the end, which pretty much took up the whole screen and was like a million times bigger than Noctis, was the um, oh, gotta butch this, but I think it's called the Adam Adam Man Toys. I think that's what it's called. I so it's this huge creature, which I'm, I think we've seen in um, previous Final Fantasy 15 trailers. Um, so this thing is huge, and it was really cool to see how how big these enemies and creatures are. Uh, in the world of EOS and how I'm thinking about how challenging they're going to be to fight but luckily you've got an ensemble of four amazing characters who uh, help you along the way <laughs> what was a cool part of the um, the live stream was when some of the game creators and directors went out um, I'm not sure how long I think a week or a month somewhere in between 
Um, so they went out and had their own real life adventure, like Noctis and the crew. So they went uh, rock climbing, they went into caves, um, they experienced camping, and so all these things and all the influences that they had in the real world went into the game. Uh, things like when you see, um, I think it's Igneous, like cooking food for the, for the guys, that was based off when they went camping. And um, when they were in the cave and they saw bats and other sort of, uh, not monsters, but animals, real life animals influenced their uh, creation of the monsters for, for this game. And that was a very cool, very cool thing to see because you don't see a lot of that in, um, in the makings of games nowadays. You see creative minds and um, a lot of influences from other areas. But for the creators of this game to go out there and actually um, experience firsthand what this type of adventure would be like was very cool to see. Leading off from that actually was um, quite a funny and weird segment of the live stream where um, Hajima Tabata, who was the game director for uh, Final Fantasy XV, um, sort of had this culinary session where he was talking about the food in Final Fantasy XV and how they're all gourmet dishes that can help the character, uh, characters in the game to actually um, get a stamina boost or stats increase, which is quite interesting. But then they're actually showing how to make some of this food, like um, I think he was trying some sort of risotto and they actually made it for him and he had it and you know, he gave a big thumbs up for it. So that was quite a weird part of the, uh, the live stream, but Hajima Tabata was such a great um, such a great person, it was a great um, character and essence to have in this um, live stream. So it was enjoyable to watch him on the screen. So that segment, even though it was out of place, was just made perfect because Hajima was there. So throughout the live stream, um, because it wasn't just being streamed here in the UK, it was being streamed around the world. It was just that Odium was doing a screening here in the UK, I believe. Um, they were doing sort of a vote online to see um, who would you like to see Noctis and the crew battle in terms of this sort of um, elite enemy battle and they chose I'm gonna butcher this one second Midgard Samo so yeah the fans chose um, Noctis and the crew to fight the Midgard Samo and um, this battle was quite interesting it was like this um, cobra type creature which I believe was in another Final Fantasy uh, game maybe seven maybe eight um but obviously now you've got these sort of um amazing looking graphics to um show the detail in this creature and the fight was very very cool it showed how the characters sort of play off each other and how um i think you can increase the momentum and increase the damage dealt if you do that so if noctis starts to move you then bring an igneous and a prompter and they all just sort of um, use each other to get more and more damage inflicted and that was a very interesting and very uh, a, a very cool um, I think cool is the word for this whole stream really but uh, really great to see um, so it always goes back to that JRPG element where everyone in your crew everyone in your team is useful so it's not just Noctis fighting the battle um, even though the other characters are being controlled by um, AI, they're still useful being productive and doing the right thing and they can play off you and you can play off them which is amazing. So the actual live stream part ended with um, the big leviathan battle and um, what this leviathan battle was about was summons. So Noctis was not trying to defeat the leviathan but he was trying to prove to the leviathan that he's worthy to, um, to summon and use this power and Despite this being awesome and looking stunning, um, I personally felt it was too short. Uh, I can't remember whether it was five minutes or less, but literally the minute Noctis got in, he had a bit of sp um, spouting with a few of the lower class enemies, and then he went for the Leviathan, and there was a few, um, few I think quick time button presses before he went into the Leviathan. And then there was this very cool shot of the Leviathan sort of coming out the water and um, knocked it sort of ready, but then boom, that's where it cut. So it didn't give too much away. Um, I think the summons, as it was mentioned, I'm sure in the live stream, is going to be such a, a great and grand part of the game. Um, 
because I've seen some of them already and they're huge. Like they actually have a presence in the game, unlike before or previous games where um, I think with Final Fantasy 13, the uh, Edolons, uh, Edolons, sorry, um, they were sort of just an additional party member and um, you didn't feel their true weight or true power. But in this case, you can definitely feel it. <laughs> you can definitely tell that there's a summon. And um, yeah, so the Leviathan battle, even though it was cut short, was very cool to see. And um, hopefully the summons in the game are going to be equally good, which I'm sure they will be. And so that was the live stream um, in a nutshell. Well, I hope in a nutshell. I'm not sure how long all these clips are going to be, um, be in total. But then um, after that, we move on to the King's Glaive movie. So the King's Glaive movie overall was, personally, I thought really, really good. Um, it was the perfect setup to give you an insight into the game, an insight into the world of EOS, um, an introduction to some of the characters you'll be meeting, uh, especially with um, Luna, King Regis, um, and what the enemy faction of the game is actually capable of and the motive. And it's obviously the crystal that is keeping EOS together. Um, so, the actual story-wise, I don't want to give too much away because obviously um, I think it's something that you should experience, especially if you're a Final Fantasy fan. And if you've got the game or if you've ordered the Deluxe Edition, I don't want to give too much away. But uh, you follow the protagonist of Nyx and his journey to sort of obey and keep safe Luna. King Regis and pretty much Eos. They constantly refer to him as a hero and that's exactly who he is and you know what comes with him. He starts off as this sort of, um, not a rogue, but very heroic character where he would always go back to help his friends even if they're in danger and how he would always try to do the right thing and save everyone he can and as we know sometimes it's not possible to save everybody but he tries his best and this means he's got a very pure heart and he's a very strong-willed character. And I thought Nyx, well, I think Nyx was played by, um, or voiced by Aaron Paul actually, and he was fantastic, very, very good. Uh, the story moved at a brisk pace, and the characters are very, um, very lovable. Lovable. You very, you feel very connected to them, especially because of the way it sort of begins. So I'll tell you a bit about the beginning and sort of less about how it ends. Uh, so the beginning starts with the city getting attacked and you see Noctis and Luna at a very young age and King Regis manages to keep Noctis safe but Luna goes with, um, uh, I forget the enemy faction's name, but the enemies um, and then it sort of skips, I'm not sure how many years but it skips a while and King Regis is now king and he's quite old and Noctis is all grown up, Luna's all grown up and then uh, it's all about a peace treaty. Um, I think I'll keep it there because, yeah, I think saying anything else would give too much away, especially with something like this where, despite how good it was and despite how devoted I was to it, you did see all the twists or all the turns of the movie coming uh, with the way the story was going. Doesn't mean it wasn't enjoyable because I absolutely loved it. Um, but in my personal recommendation, I feel that if you did get the deluxe edition or if you do get a chance to see the movie, um, see the movie before you play the game. And I think that will increase and heighten your hype and it will also put you in good stead to, or good steed, I think is how you say it, a good steed to start playing the game. Uh, so that's my personal, uh, personal opinion. And that pretty much uh, sums up and wraps up the video guys. Um, I hope I haven't missed anything but I just tried to culminate and uh, share everything that I experienced with you guys and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, so the live stream, amazing. Kingsclave, amazing. Overall, amazing. And I think the best part about the entire event was just being with the other fans of Final Fantasy XV and being in that environment was just awesome. Uh, because everyone felt belonged and you could talk to the person on your left, talk to the person on your right and they know exactly what you're talking about so that was very cool. Um, so if you did like this video or this type of vlog, I know it's not um, very conventional but if you liked it please do give a like for this video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, there's loads of vlogs coming on its way 
and there's loads of other videos and hopefully we'll start gameplay videos very soon who knows maybe some final fantasy 15 too um so yeah like comment and subscribe and until the next video guys see you world hey looking good jacob oh, <laughs>